Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here, and today we're talking about adrenaline and noradrenaline, or if you're from the US, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now we've all had that situation where we've been scared before and we've had that adrenaline rush. Now what's actually happening physiologically when we get scared? Well, we actually trigger something called the sympathetic nervous system, also known as our fight or flight system. And this actually begins in our brain, specifically at an area called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus sends a signal down what we call sympathetic nerves or fight or flight nerves that go down into our spinal cord and actually shoot out of our spinal cord at our thoracic level. So this is about here down to our lumbar level here. And it starts to shoot these signals out of our spinal cord and send these signals to parts of our body that need to respond in times of fight or flight. Now what parts of the body need to respond in times of fight or flight? Well, one, our pupils of our eyes. Why? Well, our pupils need to dilate, they need to open up. If they do, we let more light in. More light in means we can see more of our surroundings and we know whether we need to fight or flight, run away. What else happens is our skin or our look becomes quite pale. This is because the sympathetic nervous system has sent signals to the blood vessels in your skin and told them to constrict. Why would we want that? Well, that means we can shunt or push the blood to parts of the body that probably need it more, such as our muscles, again, to fight or run away. It also means that if we move this blood away from our skin, if we get cut, we don't bleed as much. You find that when you get scared, your heart starts to pump harder and faster. This is because if our heart pumps harder and faster, we can deliver more oxygenated blood to those muscles to fight or run away. Our respiratory rate, the way we breathe, we start to breathe deeper and faster because our airways, they relax and open up. We can bring more oxygen in, again, to give to the blood so the heart can deliver it to the muscles as well. Now, all of these things happen so that we can respond in these times of fight or flight. And it's all because of noradrenaline. Noradrenaline being the neurotransmitter. Now, the signal starts at the hypothalamus, the brain, goes down to the spinal cord, exits the spinal cord only at the thoracic and lumbar region, doesn't come out at the neck, called the cervical, doesn't come out anywhere below the second lumbar region, all comes out and then can be sent to the eye, the heart, the airways, for example. Now, once this neuron has reached these organs, it then needs to speak to those organs and tell them what to do. Remember, pupils dilate, heart increase, so forth. It does this because it releases the neurotransmitter noradrenaline. And noradrenaline will bind to that organ and tell it to do that particular function. Now, what is adrenaline then? Well, we send one of these fight or flight signals from the brain down to the spinal cord out and actually send it to the kidneys. More so, the little hat that sits on the kidneys called the adrenal gland. It's called the adrenal gland because when it's stimulated, it releases adrenaline. And so when we send this signal there, noradrenaline is released, the neurotransmitter, speaks to the adrenal gland, tells it to release adrenaline, and adrenaline is a hormone. Adrenaline jumps into the bloodstream like all hormones do, and then is traveling all throughout the body. Now if adrenaline's in the bloodstream and goes all throughout the body, that means adrenaline Adrenaline can speak to the eye, the heart, the airways, even the adrenal gland again, and the blood vessels in the skin and tell them to continue doing what they're doing until we're out of any danger, okay? So noradrenaline being the neurotransmitter and adrenaline being the hormone, and this is what happens in fight or flight.